it is time. <laughs> Attack on Titan Season 4, Part 2, Episode 1, Season 4, Episode 17, Episode 76, whatever you want to call it, is here. I'm super hyped for this. I've been watching Attack on Titan since it's first come out. It was the very first anime, like proper anime that I got into outside of like, you know, your Pokemons and your Yu-Gi-Oh. It was the first one that I watched like properly in sub in Japanese and it just fully engrossed me. It was like my starter anime and we're finally here on the final stretch. I don't know if this will be the actual ending of the show or I've heard rumors that there might be a movie as well. So I'll definitely be doing a reaction to that as well. I'm just really excited to get into the final leg of Attack on Titan. I just wish I could have shared my reactions for the whole show, you know, but I'm glad I at least get to do it for this. So a few things before the episode starts. I'm obviously going to be watching in sub. I'm going to avoid watching the OP and the ED for now, just in case there's spoilers. If there is, let me know. And if there isn't and it's safe to watch, I'll watch it next episode. Where we left off, it seems we're very quickly going to get into some action, kind of an Eren versus Reiner situation. Zeke had just blown up Levi. I don't think Levi's dead. I refuse to believe he's dead. You know, Armin has survived much worse. There's no way Levi's dead. I just don't, don't believe it. I have been spoiled on one or two things. They weren't that major. I'll just mention them kind of when they come up. So when I see it, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's the thing I had spoiled. Just so I don't want to mention them here and spoil anything else for anyone. I just want to give two shout outs. One to Film Buff. He's my one of my favorite channels. He's kind of the reason I started this channel in the first place. If you're watching my videos and not watching his, you're doing something wrong. I just hope I'm one tenth of as sharp as he is in his reactions. And if I am, that will make for some great reactions because I'm very much into the whole discussion side as well. And then of course, a huge shout out to all my Joy-Con boys. Etika never got to see the ending of the show. So it's a great way to honor him by us living through it for him. Him. So one final thing before we get into it, if you're interested, check out the Patreon where you can find a full length timer based reaction to this episode where you can just sync up your own footage in case there's anything you want to see and it got cut out for the YouTube edit. Okay, let's just jump into Attack on Titan Season 4 Part 2 Episode 1. That's a mouthful. Fingers? Are those Levi's fingers? He didn't get his whole hand blown off, did he? And Haji, Haji's found him. Yeah. He did catch that explosion right to his face. And that's the Titan that Zeke, it kind of like put Zeke in his stomach to hide him. <laughs> oh yeah, because they see Levi as a threat to the Jaegerist. No, I think Hanji is bluffing. Yeah. It's just releasing all its steam for some reason? Yeah, it's like gone down to his skeletal form. I thought it would be trying to protect Zeke. Did that heal Zeke somehow? Oh. Oh wow, she just jumped in the water. Hopefully she can help Levi. What? He's like in the Parv's realm. That's the path. Yeah, he turned the moon into Titans, but Levi killed them all. <laughs> I mean, there's still people trying to get in the way. Reiner's still... Just keep moving forward. Yes, yeah, Eren's. Oh, okay. Just keep moving forward. That's Eren's saying now. Very heavy metal. Coming for you. Okay, there's a bit in English. And never wanted to be the king. Is that kind of Eren's perspective? 
all I ever wanted to do was save your life. Some of it's a bit hard to understand. Obviously, it's not English as a first language and then it's screaming on top of it. Reminds me a bit of the Parasite, the Maxim openings, but a bit less auto tune -y. If I lose it all, it's like you're risking everything for the cause. This is very much more kind of the Linked Horizons type sound rather than the My War for the first half of season four. Very like intimidating, isn't it? Okay. Conviction. I thought this episode was titled Judgment for some reason. Okay, yeah, we're back to the Erin and Ryan a bit. Galliard's right there. <laughs> we're hearing that song again. They use that a lot in season four. I know Sawano is supposed to be back for this season as well. <laughs> And the airships are here with Marley. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this is like where we left off. Oh wow, that's a lot of people. But none of these will be Titans because Zeke can't use his roar because Zeke's not on their side anymore. So they're just going to be regular soldiers, yeah. What is that? Oh, like a tank? Or is it peaks like gear? Oh, <laughs> he completely missed that. It's fine because she can regenerate. We're going to see Eren using the Warhammer Titan ability as well, perhaps. That was just the hardening, but he has that now. So Eren's like even stronger than before. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, he can escape. Yeah, he's not listening. Because they want him to escape so he can go find Zeke. And then they can do their whole sterilization plan. It's Eren just wants to... <laughs> he just wants to face Reiner again. Oh, here we go. looks like they're still using the 3D models for the Titans. I was wondering about that because of the delay. If they had a bit more time, you know? But it looks a bit more polished, maybe. Yeah, like, Eren's beat Reiner before and now he's even more powerful with the Warhammer. I don't know how well this is going to go. But Reiner still has this very kind of suicidal mentality, doesn't he? He doesn't really want to be here anymore. Oh yeah, she's going to get some shit for this. <laughs> she's the whole reason they're here. Okay. Showing some compassion. And Colt's here as well. Oh yeah, he could transform as well if Zeke actually did anything. And Zeke doesn't know that he swallowed the fluid. Yeah. They just need to keep Zeke and Eren away from each other. Oh, Gabby knows. She was in the room, yeah. Okay, so they figured it out. And they already knew he had some special abilities. Yeah, he's got faith in Reiner. Okay, Reiner's really going at it. But Eren's hardening is a lot harder than Reiner's armor. Yeah, it's just tearing right through it. But if Galliard and... if he, Yeah, he can come in to help. Yeah, that's it. He's using his... Found the Warhammer. Okay, so Galliard's claws are like stronger than the Warhammer. 
And the Warhammer can pierce Reiner's armor as well, okay. Yeah, look at that, wow. The detailing on that was great. Yeah, and then Peak's helping as well from a distance. That looked like it hit him right in the head as well. But that's not a problem for Eren. He has the durability. He can just jump out and make a new Titan. <laughs> He's correcting them as general now. Yeah, and Marley's here. Taking out some of the scouts. It's kind of hard to know now because we don't have a visual indicator on who's a Jaegerist and who is kind of not a Jaegerist on the Eldian side. And then, of course, there's the Mali side as well. There's kind of three groups at play here. Yeah, Galliard has really got that mobility, doesn't he? Oh, another hit right to the head. Yeah, just play a battle of endurance, I guess. Helios used to have had the spear in the imagery, didn't he? Sort of like staging Reiner as Helios. Okay, and Yokopan's gonna free them all. Yeah, I guess they obviously don't want Eren to go ahead with his plan, but they don't want Marley to get the found, founding titan, do they? But Nyokopan didn't know anything about the wine. Yeah, Connie's really just going for it at the moment, especially with everything that happened with Sasha. Never really seen Connie like that. Mm. Yeah, they're in a tough situation. There's still the threat of the rumbling looming. I do think the rumbling is almost like a Chekhov's gun at this point. I feel like it's almost inevitable how much they've talked about it and set it up. Yeah, she doesn't know if she can actually harm Eren. Yeah, but is Eren kind of bluffing using Zeke? Yeah, Eren's the one with the power. You know, if he has the power to change biology, could he remove the power of the Titans from all of the Eldians? So Armin wants him to initiate the rumbling. Oh wow, that's brutal. <laughs> oh, was that it? That flew by. Okay, I won't watch the ending either. This was just in Japanese. Sounds a bit more upbeat, maybe becoming a bit somber. You know, the kind of 80s for the final seasons of shows are usually very somber and sad, you know, but usually a bit calmer than the openings. Yeah, it's quite soothing. Okay, that episode just completely flew by. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. You know, it seems this final stage of the show is going to be quite action focused. I don't know if there's going to be as many like twists and turns as in season four, part one, but they were kind of maybe setting up some betrayal here with Zeke and Eren. You know, Eren, he's going along with this plan for the euthanization plan, but now there's this seed of doubt planted. So maybe he could have something else up his sleeve and he's just using Zeke to obviously get the Founding Titan's powers. But who knows what he is actually planning to use it for. Like I said, I think the rumbling is almost an inevitability at this point. It's like a Chekhov's gun. They've set it up so much. I feel like there must be at least a little bit of an activation of a rumbling at some point even if it's maybe just he activates it to defeat all of the Marlians I hear at the moment but we really don't know 
kind of the full capabilities of the founding titan do we you know we've heard that it can change biology so there's this euthanasia plan where they're going to sterilize everyone so no one can have any kids and then all of the eldians will die out in a generation i have speculated that if he can change biology he could remove the power of the titans from the eldians so they'd be exactly the same biologically as the marlians but like the Marlians could still kind of oppress the Eldians because of that. And they can still say, oh, look at what you've done in the past. We're still going to keep you on this island. We're still going to keep you in these camps, you know. So I don't think that would change that much unless Marley was also like brought to his knees and defeated. OK, so we started the episode back with Zeke and Levi. Levi is very beat up and we find Hanji and Flock have found Levi. I think that he's still alive. We never got any confirmation from Flock, and there was a bit of hesitation there with Hanji. She says he's alive, but that might just be, you know, to throw Flock off. Hanji and Levi are kind of unaccounted for now because she jumped in the river. I think either way, at least for this battle, Levi is going to be out of action. You know, he's really beat up. There's no way he can heal in time to be any help here. That's quite a common thing when you have a character who's so overpowered, kind of get rid of him so he can't be involved in a fight to add more tension but i mean you know even if he was here there'd still be a lot of tension because of how many characters and how many things how many spinning plates there are and then we see zeke has been fully healed and then he's in this realm with a little girl who has built him out of sand and that i think that's like the paths realm because we've seen Ymir there before when it had the kind of aurora borealis around her and she's kind of sitting in the sand as she awakens so I think that's kind of the paths realm where the power of the titans is held or like originates from and then there's this little girl we've heard before the story of Ymir the kind of original titan who kind of did a deal with the devil that's kind of the propaganda that Marley has propagated. So I'm wondering, is that little girl like a kind of construct for Ymir to portray herself from? That's like her as a child and she's there and then she's helping Zeke. So it seems like she does have some kind of motives. She was on Zeke's side. She wants Zeke to succeed in some way if she's going to help him out like that. But then she could also just be helping Zeke. For him to get to Eren and she's actually on Eren's side because you know we have that whole doubt that's planted in everyone's mind now is Zeke and Eren are their morals exactly lined up anymore I don't know Eren's ideology has always been I'm going to kill all of the titans it's never been I'm going to wipe out the Eldians I'm going to like wipe out my own people it's always I'm going to wipe out the titans of course by the Eldians eventually all dying out. There would no longer be any Titans because no one would have the power to transform into Titans. But that's not really Eren's way of doing things, I guess. And then after that, we kind of got back into the action with Eren and Reiner and Galliard. That was great seeing the moment with Commander Magath or um, General Magath now reuniting with Gabby. You know, you'd think he might kind of be annoyed at her but he was just kind of glad to see her still okay and of course falco he is still kind of in the castle with armin and everyone he's kind of at that location isn't he because colt is here now he is obviously very concerned for falco it feels like falco is one of the kind of last glimmers of hope in the show he's one of the most innocent characters he's, i really love falco as a character you know everyone else is so corrupted and They've had to push their morals, but Falco, he really has this kind of sense of innocence for him. And I think, you know, we saw, even when it came to Connie this episode, Connie was super worked up. He's just sick of this whole war. I think everyone is at this point, you know, but Connie, he was sick of all these portrayals and then everything that happened with Sasha, he is obviously very emotional at the moment. I think the death, of Sasha kind of represented the death of almost like innocence for the show. 
you know, Sasha kind of was this comedic relief. You know, him and Connie, they had these great interactions together. But now that she's gone, this kind of levity from the show has gone as well. I mean, there wasn't much there anyway, but she provided some great comic relief. And kind of since the start of season four, it's been much, much darker. We got to see Aaron using the Warhammer Titan powers a bit. I don't know if this is the first time he's used them because there has been like a bit of, there's been like a month since they returned back to Paradise. But it seems like he doesn't really have that great of a control over them yet. You know, when we saw the Warhammer Titan actually using them, we saw her creating loads of weapons and different things. But at the moment, Aaron has just kind of created spikes. So it seems like maybe he's not quite used to the power yet, or maybe I don't think he'd be holding back for any reason at the moment. Let me see some of the kind of power scaling with that. It can pierce Reiner and then Galliard can cut through it. So we kind of have a sense of who can and who can't break through it. And I thought that was great imagery. I'm pretty sure when we see the statue of Helios, he has a spear and then obviously Commander Magath he was saying, we need our own Helios, we need this hero. And then Reiner is holding the piece of the Warhammer Titan that is shaped like a spear. I think that was some great imagery there. So Marley is kind of setting up Reiner to be this savior and be this hero. But I don't think that's what he wants at all. Reiner, you know, he just wants this whole thing to be over. He just wants to die in peace, I think. I do actually hope that he lives i hope he's one of the characters that lives because i think it would be a really beautiful ending for him for him to kind of find his will to live again and we see maybe you know a flash forward at the end of the show and that he's lived a great life and it was actually a life worth living i think that would be a really beautiful end to reiner's story rather than him getting what he wants and him actually dying right now Going away from the story side for a bit, I think the animation here was great. You know, Mappa, we know that they can do great animation. In Jujutsu Kaisen, all of the animation there was just phenomenal. It's just kind of the time constraints. You know, there was this whole discussion and discourse when season four came out. There is some aspects of the kind of Mappa animation style that I don't like a ton. I, I'm really not a fan of rotoscoping. So when they did that in the first half of season four, I wasn't a huge fan of that. And I think some of the 3D models, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I think this episode, they worked quite well. It seemed like maybe they had a chance to improve some of the 3D models a bit. There was a few scenes when they were showing Aaron's 3D model. It was like clearly a 3D model, but I think it was much more convincing that it was, it looked a bit more convincing to be 2D rather than 3D. I completely understand why they do all the 3D models and stuff. They have a very strict time limit. I'm hoping, you know, we've had this break, so I'm hoping that they have had enough time to be able to do this story justice and animate it really beautifully because I know Mappa are definitely capable of doing that. And then kind of on the music side, I know Thawano is supposed to be back, right? And it's kind of like, there's a guy who did season four, part one. The name is kind of slipping my memory at the moment. But there's that song, the dun, 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 dun. There's that song. I think that was kind of overused a bit, but it is a really good song. We saw that returning here. But I am hoping for some of the classics to return. You know, TKT is one of my favorites, the kind of very emotional one. And I'm not sure if UC Big Girl would return. Maybe it will. It would be super hype if it did, though. I think that's all I have to talk about here. I don't want to go on and on and on. I could probably just keep going and going. So I'll cut it off here, but I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider leaving a like or a comment. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date for all of the future episodes. And if you're interested in the full length uncut reaction, be sure to check out the Patreon. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.